Jordan here at the Running Remote Conference in Bali, Indonesia, beautiful Bali, Indonesia, and I'm representing Remote Year at this year's conference. Now, Running Remote is a conference that brings together like-minded individuals who are running remote teams to talk about best practices and different concepts of remote work. I wanted to use this time to share some of the insights that we learned here from the conference over the past two days. And we're gonna talk about different things about remote work, remote companies, and remote lifestyle. A lot of companies are going remote and remote work is here to stay. No matter if you're a small company, a large company, or whatever industry you're in, remote work is becoming more and more common and that couldn't have been more prevalent at a conference like Running Remote. There are a lot of actually industries represented here. It's not only web and app and tech. Uh, we know we have food, uh, e-commerce, food and beverage, and a lot of these these companies are not doing remote work. So the conference also attracts bigger companies that want to step in to the remote work realm. So what we're doing is we're uh, demystifying the idea that remote work is for the few and that it's not serious and it's just for those who want to sip a coconut. Um, and so that's essentially what the conference is about: Le teaching companies how to transition as well as uh, improving their processes. To, to think about the terms that you use when talking about virtual and remote work. So I, I tend to talk about virtual work because I like to, to talk to companies that have office sites that haven't yet realized that they are a virtual company, company because they are working across these different office sites. When you use the word remote, it typically takes you to fully remote and companies who are not used to that get, get concerned that you might be trying to get them to move to, a, in, to be a fully remote organization and that's a really scary concept for a lot of companies who might have um, started out co-located, might have a long history of being co-located and get concerned about the control that they might be giving up with fully remote workers. In terms of other other terms that are a little scary to people is if you start thinking about a remote work policy, the words work from home can scare people as well because I, I think that the media has actually reinforced this misperception that work at home means that you're not actually working. And I like to, to give the example of when I worked from home for this Fortune 500 company, I had a team of 20. I was responsible for $250 million with a business. I got dressed every day. I got in front of the video camera, you know, I wasn't in my pajamas snacking on the couch. It was a real job that I was doing from my home and it increased my engagement to be able to work from home and I was able to be super productive. is the fact that physiotherapy is traditionally thought of as a very hands-on profession. Um, so it just takes thinking outside of the box to work out, well, I've still got value to give, even if I'm not directly touching people. I can still educate, I can still diagnose. So I think in uh, professions that we wouldn't traditionally think of as remote professions, are there ways that you can work around it and find a way? So I think remote working in general, I think uh, a lot of people think of developers, designers, that sort of thing. Um, but there's actually a lot, of, a lot of things happening, say in the health industry for example, that is enabling people to work more rem remotely than they have before.
generally when you're traveling you get exposed to new things, new people, new ideas and so if you are remote uh, you're not sort of encumbered by the, 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 the trappings of a particular space day in day out. I think innovation requires creativity, it requires inspiration uh, and so when you are remote and you can actually work from anywhere, you're moving around, you're traveling, getting exposed to new things, then it sparks creativity in the mind which is then in turn turns into innovation. Before the internet, uh, local and physical. Local communities sort of interacting physically. And then the internet came and the locality and the region became digital. Uh, but then after a few years of that, the world became global and digital. And so you had friends all around the world, you had communities all around the world, and the tools are there to actually make this happen. Uh, but it's been a decade since that has happened, and I'm seeing a trend of where there's scalability and networks that are global in nature, but being done in physical spaces. We're seeing also is that there is more and more people that are moving to the gig economy, to the freelancing lifestyle and being paid for their projects, being paid by projects or being paid just for what they do. And I think that's the future. We will not, we'll not have full-time jobs, we'll be, pay, we'll be very specific in one thing, we will work on it and we will ship it maybe one day, maybe one week. So we'll work in smaller projects for more companies instead of one company, one big project. is that the sheer fact of a company that's thinking about increasing or adding to the, uh, remote, remote working to the workforce, just that sheer fact is going to help in the environment because their employees will have to travel less, uh, waste the time and money and resources that can have negative impact on the actual environment. Think about all the, the transportation cost and the pollution that comes from that. Um, and in addition, it creates a lot of freedom of choice among the, the actual workers to spend their time that they might actually want to go volunteer or give back in some way. Spirituality helps with you understanding what works for you because you're being more conscious about what kind of time you work better, what kind of time you actually are feeling drowsy. Spirituality helps with that. And also, being conscious about yourself gets you more clear about your motivation. When you have a more intrinsic motivation, you don't procrastinate at all. And that being digital nomad, that's the best thing ever. recommend entrepreneurs that are say lacking in prioritizing spirituality in their life um, and in their business life it's it's difficult to bring it into your business life if it's not into your personal life first so I would say start with um, soul searching start with a little bit of practice time and dedicated uh, like personal rituals start with yourself first and developing the self first and doing a little bit of that work so I know entrepreneurs especially digital nomads are super into time blocking time efficiency um, you know they got their gadgets they got their apps they got all that shit and that's great schedule some time in for yourself and for your spiritual self for your, for your actual self-development block that in make sure that's first thing you do as soon as you get up and then everything else will fall into line and if that's what you got to do for it to translate into the, that's speaking your language speak your language spirituality speaks everyone's language it's not just people in white robes and big beards it's, it's not just that it doesn't have to be a religious thing it's actually just a personal thing you're developing the self the spirit it's not religion so make some time for it for yourself we always think about other people I think that community actually starts with yourself 
So when you look at community, you kind of like need to understand who you are and what is your desire itself and what do you need to get to that desire itself. And the answer is community. So you kind of want to understand that if you live a certain lifestyle with certain needs, that you need to collect people around that to make sure that you live that lifestyle. And this is something that a lot of nomads don't really consider because they don't have that awareness around it. So what's really important is that if you are uh, into fitness and uh, maybe you want to do, um, I don't know, like a very comprehensive morning routine, you do want to find community that covers that or that at least taps into that process or that those topics. If you're more into entrepreneurship and you really, really like to party and boogie around, you need to find community that's doing that. Because a lot of nomads are so overwhelmed by so many people and community on offer that it's really hard to kind of like, it's overwhelming. And because it's overwhelming, you just do and you don't go back to yourself. Like, what do I actually need? Like, what is going to make me happy or uh, push me on the edge or make me make that dream happen? see in my community and uh, here talking to people is that a lot of people are very stressed about dating as a remote worker because it seems to so far out like how do you make traveling around so some people are on a fast pace some people slower but how do you make these connections and how do you find someone for life if that is what you want to and people are very worried that they may never find this person or may have to take a lot of effort into relationships and yeah they, they ask me questions like where and how do you find your soulmate and I always say well the trick is not thinking about it <laughs> like the trick is to not worry so much about where is your soulmate and where are these people In my opinion, it's absolutely possible to find a nomad, a like-minded person uh, to travel the world with and live life with and have a romance. And it's absolutely possible as well through, I mean, we are offering now some sort of ways to like help people with finding romance on the, in, in their lives and as a, as a traveler. So uh, I'm, I've been a nomad for the past five years, started traveling in July 2014 and uh, not just solo, I've been traveling with my wife and two kids, I've got a 10 year old boy and 13 year old girl, so my son's been, been dragging him around this uh, nomadic lifestyle for half his life. the opportunity uh, by working remote to do what I do and to, to be able to explore the area. Um, a couple advantages it's had for me is uh, when I was in the corporate world I would leave at, leave early in the morning at 6.30 in the morning, get home at like 6.30 at night because of commuting. Uh, I would definitely wouldn't be, be there when my kids woke up in the morning or for lunchtime. I'm able to have breakfast, lunch and dinner with my kids almost every single day. Uh, which is just incredible. I'm there when they want to show me. My, my wife homeschools the kids and world schools them and so they'll go off, go to an amazing adventure or wherever we're living, come back and share with me stuff they've learned. I'm, they're able to educate me, we're able to build off of one, in, one another. Just super awesome. Um, I don't actually believe that the future of work is fully remote. 
uh, even though that's kind of like you know maybe conflicting with with, with, with our vision and what some people think um, I think personal interactions are irreplaceable that's the reason we have an event that's the reason we don't have digital passes I think it will be a hybrid model and every company will have a remote team uh, in one way or another and uh, for sure any startup that's just starting out they have to understand how remote work works in order to save money from you know running offices and reinvesting it back into growth and scaling faster. Um, I think the bold prediction is, is going back to the thought on um, that, that remote work is going to become a part of every company's um, way that they treat their talent moving forward because of the fact that they're going to have trouble getting talent in, in, the, in the locations where their office buildings are. They're going to need to reduce their footprint from a real estate perspective. So these are things that they should be testing out now and creating policy for and, and creating skills training for in order to enable this in the future so they're not caught off guard. Work is going to be the de facto um, um, de facto way of working in you know in a decade. Definitely, the jobs are going remote. People are want to move. People want to work from home, not be stuck in the traffic. So the future of work is remote. Thank you for joining me on this journey at the Running Remote Conference here in Bali. I will definitely be back again next year. If you're interested in the details about the conference, I'm going to leave those in a link below. Did you go to the conference? Let me know what you thought of it. Pop your questions or your comments down below. Make sure you pop a like on the video and share it with your friends. And for all you nomads, travelers, and people running remote out there, keep wandering. You're not lost.